Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the online church. Welcome to the online church, and we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Thank God for his goodness and his mercy, and thank God for you. Thank God for each and every one of you. I praise God that we can come together on another wonderful Sunday morning. It's beautiful here in Lithonia, Georgia. Man, uh, I woke up with the chills this morning, and so I was sleeping on top of the covers, and I realized it was in the low 60s. I said, okay, all right, this is my kind of weather. Hey, a shout out to my main man, Nathan, and to all of our friends, my granddaughter, Wakina, and to Ryan, and so, so many others. And we give a shout out to those of you who are online live with us, and those who will listen to this worship service and participate by way of the recording. Yes, we want you to participate. Be a participant. This is your service. It's all for you. And so we give God the glory. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hey, let's, uh, let's I'll start our service off today. Let's hear a, a song from our friend uh, Kevin S. Wilson down in Kentucky. Let's uh, play a song. Uh, let's get into a good old country atmosphere. Uh, praise God. We're going country today. Let's hear from Kevin Wilson. He's got a mighty song called I'm Say Born Again. Born Again. So let's listen to this by Kevin Wilson. Thank you, Kevin Wilson. Thank you, Kevin Wilson. 
And thank you for giving us that permission to play your songs. Hallelujah. We just bless God and thank God for Kevin Wilson. And you can contact Kevin Wilson or get his music. He gives us the permission to play his songs. You can contact him. And I'm putting that in the chat room right now. Kevin Wilson band.webs.com Kevin Wilson band Kevin S. Wilson band dot webs dot com why don't you contact Kevin Wilson get in touch with him tell him you like his music order one of his CDs I'm born again born again he said something happened I don't feel the same and you know ladies and gentlemen when you give your life to Jesus get born again you don't feel the same. Why? Because you're not the same. You're not the same. You're not the same person. Uh, the scripture tells us that if any man is born again, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So Kevin Wilson says, I'm born again. Something happened. I don't feel the same. And if you're listening today, if you're on live with us today or, or you're listening by way of uh, recording you can be born again if you're not saved if you're not born again you can be born again ask Jesus Christ to come into your life tell him you're sorry for your sins repent of your sins and if you need any help with that give me give me a call or send me an e email uh, we'll get someone to lead you to the Lord we can get Dustina or or Nathan or we can get Ryan or someone else to lead you to the Lord and to pray with you. So welcome again to the online church where the Lord is blessing multitudes of people all around the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank God. We're going to ask our friend Ryan Trugler to come and lead us uh, at this time. If Ryan, we're going to ask Ryan to come and lead us in prayer. Morning again, Pastor. Morning, Church. Morning. Um, have, morning. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another glorious day today. Lord, we want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and sending up into heaven and defeating death and defeating the grave. Lord, we want you to bless this online ministry, and we want you to give, come down and give Pastor Carter the knowledge and wisdom to teach us your word again today. And we want to thank you for your word again today, Lord, and every day after that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Lord, we just want to say we just we want you to come down and show us all, all the miracles you you've done for everybody, and you know, the stuff the miracles you show my given to my brother, and the healing for him, and healing for Justina's daughter, and <clears throat> we want to keep praying for all these people. And Lord, we just want to say we just we thank you, we love you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Ryan lives up in Marysville, Pennsylvania, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're uh, ever up in that area, uh, somewhere between Lancaster and, and Harrisburg, Marysville, you look for Ryan. And uh, you might read him, meet him on the highway. So be careful how you drive because you might be riding right past Ryan. And we want to get a good report if Ryan uh, happens to I'll meet you on the highway up in Pennsylvania or one of the neighboring states. Ryan has a great testimony. He's been praying for his brother. His brother had a stroke um, uh, recently, and uh, the doctors gave a bad report. But we're going to ask Ryan to give us an update about what Jesus is doing in his brother's life. Come on back, Ryan. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, the update. They said before I came on church online this morning for the church here, uh, I had just got off the phone with my brother. Uh, he was a little medicated, <laughs> but uh, he's he's learning to feed himself again. He's he's chewing good and he's swallowing good and uh, he's he's walking with with a walker. He that's a little help he needs, but eventually uh, he's probably won't be using a walker. He'll probably be using maybe like a cane or type thing. Um, but for now, you know, Jesus has been working on him, through him, and and every other, and every people person that's going in there. And I've been praying over him and for him, and you know, interceding, standing in the gap for him. And uh, you know, he's he's just 
they, the doctor said that he would probably never walk again. You know, he, they, he would be wheelchair bound. And uh, I said, no, Lord. I said, he's not going to be wheelchair bound. I said, come on. I said, we're going to get out here and do some healing. <laughs> All right now. So, All right now. All right. So, uh, yeah, great. Amen. Um, I give God all the all the praise for that, you know. And, and like I told you that one day, uh, I, I put, laid my hands on him, and and I got hot, and I said and something you know, like a surge of electricity. I mean, it was a powerful, powerful surge that went through me to into my brother's body. And I said, "Dude, did you feel that?" And he said, "Dude, I felt that." <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so that I knew right then and there, God. God took over. He said, he said, son, I got this. He said, son, I got this. Praise said, God. There, Praise Lord, God. So, Thank yeah, you, I Ryan. God all the, all the glory and praise for that. Thank you, Ryan. I praise God. Thank you for your faith and trust in the Lord. And, and we thank God for what he is doing. We give God all the glory, honor, and praise. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan said, he said, he talked to the Lord. He said, come on, Lord, come on down now. we got to do some healing. Now, you know, that's faith, ladies and gentlemen. That's faith. When you talk to the Lord, say, come on, Lord, come on down now. we got to do some healing. Praise God. See, God is, ladies and gentlemen, look here, look here, look here. I want to talk to my granddaughter, Joaquina, right now. Kina, you just trust in the Lord. The Bible says, the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth seeking to prove himself strong on someone whose heart is open to him. He's looking for anybody, anybody who's willing to trust God at his word. I say this to Kena, and I say this to every one of you. Whatever the situation is, there is no mountain so high that God can't move it. There's no situation he can't handle. Ryan's brother was in serious condition. His life was threatened by a stroke. And Ryan said, come on, Lord, you got to come on down now. we got to do some healing. And, and that's the kind of faith. Now, that's not disrespecting God. That's just the way Ryan talks with God. Now, we have our own way. Everybody has your way of talking to God, but you honor God. You worship him. Abraham bargained with God. Hey, God, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 back up, God. Abraham told God, back up, God. You're here. You came from all the way from heaven to come and talk to me about destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, I got some relatives in, in Sodom. Lot. Lot and his family lived there. And God God said, God, you know, just listen to Abraham. And then God, Abraham said, well, God, if there be 50 righteous people in that city, will you spare the city? And God said, I'll spare it. Abraham said, well, perhaps there are only 40 righteous. Will you spare the city? Then he got down to bargaining with God. Hey, God, wait a minute. But forgive me for speaking this way, but if there are only 10 righteous people, will you spare that city and not destroy it? And God said, if I find 10 righteous people, I will not destroy this city. And God could not find 10 righteous, but God did deliver Abraham's relatives. And so when Ryan says to God, oh, God, come on now, come on now, we got some healing to do. And Ryan laid hands on his brother. First time Ryan ever laid hands on anybody. And Ryan just testified. You heard it. Play the ta play the tape back. Ryan Ryan heard that, and he said, "Woo! It felt like electricity. A surge went through me." And Ryan said to his brother, "Woo, dude, did you feel that? I mean, that's the way he talks to his brother. Woo, dude, did you hear that?" And his brother, who was heavily medicated, said, "Dude, I felt that." Ladies and gentlemen, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. And I'm saying to my granddaughter, don't be overwhelmed by your studies in, in college. You can do this. You ask God, God, touch me so I can handle this, this load, this course load, and work at the same time. Direct my path. You might have to shift some things around and, and, and spend more time doing this and less time doing that. But you put your trust in the Lord. Dustina can witness. She can witness. She's a witness. She's a witness. When you turn it over to God, God, to, well, let, 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 let's bring Dustina back on. Dustina, come on, give us a testimony of what you've seen God do. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, I, I can tell you I'm a living testimony. I've seen God work many miracles, even in my own life and in others. I've 
the Lord healed me many a times from ailments that I've had, some I've had for almost 20 years, and I've seen him change the lives in my children and my spouse with Michael. He, God's been working on restoration. I've seen friends healed, uh, people healed of dementia, I've, and people say there's no cure for that. But God, God has the final say, not man. And I've seen people healed of cancer. I mean, it, it's endless of what God can do. There's no, there's no limitations when it comes to God. You cannot put God in a box. You can't say, well, this can't be done, that can't be done, because you're putting limits on God. And we know He has the power. He has the strength. He, He's the one who has the final say in all things. Not us. Not man. Nobody. God is the ultimate power. And as long as we trust and believe and have faith, he says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We also have the prayer of faith. We, Like Ryan did with his brother when he laid hands on him, he had the prayer of faith, and he believed that God was going to raise his brother up, and he did. God was faithful. He was faithful to Ryan's faith in him. And we, we got to have the same faith, and we got to trust, we got to believe, and we got to know that God can do these things. And the, and Jesus even said Himself before He left and ascended back to heaven that we ourselves would do even greater things than He did. So believe on that, stand on His word, follow His word, trust Him. And I mean, I could go on for hours but I'm not going to but I mean it, it's simple I mean it's so simple just trust believe trust in him give your life to him and see what God can do with you and do with your life it's as simple as just saying Lord come in take over take my life heal me have your will and your way in all things amen that's my friend Justina down in Tennessee, and she knows what God is doing. She's seeing God do some mightily and marvelous things. We want to thank you for that testimony. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here at the online church where everybody, somebody, and Jesus Christ is Lord, King of all. Hey, we're going to get ready for some word pretty soon, but um, we want to look at um, uh, the scripture and then we want to look at the word. And so I want to uh, ask you to download or open your Bible to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. I'm going to read the scripture. And then we're going to have another song by um, um, Kevin Wilson. And then we're going to hear a message. Have a message that's going to bless you. Uh, this message is going to bless everybody and anybody who's listening Okay, so Exodus chapter 13, let's look at this scripture, Exodus chapter, I'm sorry, I said 13, Exodus 14, 1 to 13. I want to read the first 13 verses of Exodus chapter 14. Usually we ask Jackie Fisher to read our scripture. Jackie's not with us today, uh, but uh Hopefully, she'll be back with us next Sunday. I'm quite sure she will. And um, the the 14th chapter of Exodus, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. And, and as I read the scripture, put yourself in the position. Be Moses or Joshua or one of the Israelites. Be one of them in this scripture. Exodus chapter 14. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pihahiroth between Migdal and the sea over against Baal Ziphon before it shall ye encamp by the sea. So God spoke to Moses as Moses was leading the children out of Israel and told Moses to take them by the way of the sea and to go and make their camp near the sea. Now, this is just after they had left Egypt. Verse 3, For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. So God told Moses to tell 
uh, uh, to encamp the people near the sea. And God told Moses, Pharaoh's coming after you. He knows you're in camp near the sea, and, and I'm going to do something. Let's listen to the rest of this reading, starting with verse 4, going through from 4 to 13. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them, and camping by the sea beside Pihahiro before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone? that we may serve the Egyptians, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Verse 13, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, you shall see them again no more. Let's add verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Let's hear another song from Kevin Wilson, and this is uh, probably what Moses was trying to tell the people at, uh, at, the, at the road, at, at, at the sea, uh, when Sparrow was coming. Don't sweat the small stuff. Kevin Wilson. Don't sweat the small stuff. He was sitting on the shoulder of that interstate, face in his hands, head on the wheel. I pulled up and asked him what was going on. I said, buddy, I know just how you feel. Because I've been there. Wasn't that long ago. If I've learned anything, if you got to get back on the road, don't sweat the small stuff. Time and a little love. Everything has a way of working now. It won't take too long if you just hold on. We stumble when times get tough. Don't sweat the small stuff. Sorry for myself. I thought of giving up or running through my head. And this old man that I know walks up to me. 
puts his arm around me and he says, Son, I've been there. Wasn't that long ago if I'd learned anything? If you gotta get back on the road, don't slip the small stuff. What time and I'm gonna love. Everything has a way of working out. It won't take too long. If you just hold on, be strong when time gets up. Just keep the faith and trust your fellow man. Don't sweat the small stuff, but time and a little love. Everything has a way of working out. It won't take too long if you just hold on. Praise God, praise God. That's Kevin Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. And as we note every Sunday, we play his songs, and we play because we have his permission to play his songs. We do not violate his copyright. Kevin Wilson said, yeah, man, go on and play the song. He didn't say, yeah, dude, go on and play, but he said, yeah, you have my permission. And so we praise God for Kevin Wilson. We praise God for all of you. Glory to God. Okay, praise God. Well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. We are going to join Moses as Moses tells the people of Israel, don't sweat the small stuff. Let's review now. Let's review. Exodus 14, 1 to 13. Actually, we read 1 to 14. And, and Pharaoh had just taken a whooping. I mean, God put so much stuff on Pharaoh. Uh, when Pharaoh refused to release the children of Israel from slavery, you know, God hates slavery. God hates slavery. God does not want people in bondage. And Pharaoh wanted to keep the Israelites in slavery. He had kept them in slavery for over 400 years, the Egyptians did. And now God sent Moses there, and Moses uh, trusted God. And, and, and Pharaoh put a hurting on, on Moses. I mean, everything Moses did, Pharaoh resisted. But the man of God did not quit. And I say to you uh, listening today, don't quit. Don't walk by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Our, our faith is in what God says, what he says in his word. We don't sweat the small stuff. No matter what kind of challenge that comes in your life, no matter how heavy the enemy tries to hit you, trust in the Lord. God will hasten his word to perform it. He will keep his promises. He told Ryan Trogler, go and lay your hands on your brother. Ryan had never laid hands on anybody before, but Ryan laid hands on his brother in the name of Jesus. And he felt the electricity go through his hands. And, he, and, and Ryan even said, hey, dude, did you feel that? And his brother was laying there suffering, uh, recovering from a stroke and under heavy medication, and his brother said, yeah, dude, I felt that. You know God is a man, not a man that he should lie. He will keep his word if we will trust him. Well, let's get back to the Red Sea. We're with Israel. Israel's backs are against the Red Sea. Pharaoh, when he, when he came to his senses, he said, man, I let those Israelites go. They uh, took all of our, the jewelry from our people. I let them go. And then, now who's going to do the work around here? And, uh, and, 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 and so he said, no, let's, let's go and get them and bring them back. And so Pharaoh got his chariots, his army, and mobilized his army. 
and went pursuing the Israelites. He heard that they were encamped near the Red Sea. He said, I've got them trapped against the sea. I'm going to go and I'll destroy as many as I can, but I'm going to bring back people to work for us because uh, our economy depends on slave labor. So it reminds me of the, the United States. I mean, some people still have not gotten over the fact that slavery has ended in this nation. And, and so back to Egypt now. And so here we are. The children of Israel were trapped against the sea. And God had hardened Pharaoh's heart. You may wonder when you're going through difficulties and you're having troubles with some people and people's attitudes have changed and, and, and people who uh, said they love you, all of a sudden they're acting crazy, acting goofy, acting with hatred and acting uh, with uh, uh, venom in, in their veins. And you wonder why do people change up on you? Sometimes God will harden their hearts like he hardened Pharaoh's heart. God has a plan, and God wants to reveal his power to you. God will also reveal to that person whose heart he's hardened, uh, uh, and that person can get saved, can get delivered. You ever wonder why church people change up on you? Family members start acting crazy because God may permit their hearts to be hardened. Everyone is going to be tested. You say you love the Lord, you're going to be tested. And so we're to walk in love with everybody, no matter what they've done to us, no matter how difficult it was what they did to us, we've got to forgive people because Jesus forgave all of us on the cross. So every one of us is going to go through that heart test. Okay, so here's Pharaoh uh, coming down uh, 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 the, the road with, with his chariots, his whole army, all of his armies mechanized. And they're coming against Israel, and Israel's encamped against the sea. And then the people of Israel all of a sudden began to rebuke Moses. Well, Moses, you're the one who brought us here. Moses, you brought us here. You shouldn't have brought us here. We don't know why we let you lead us out of Egypt anyway. We, it was better for us when we were in Egypt than to be here. Now we're just sitting ducks for Pharaoh and his army. And so Moses, the leader who trusted in God, and ladies and gentlemen, when God tells you to do something, no matter how it turns out, when you trust God and you're obedient to the Lord, God is going to work things out to his praise and his glory. So Moses stood on the word of God. There are times, uh, I want to say to my granddaughter, Joaquina, when God tells you to go to school, you stand on the word of God. Sure, it's going to get tough. Uh, nothing's going to come easy for you, but you trust in the Lord. You pray, you seek God, and you keep on trusting in the Lord. And so Moses is here. The people are rebelling against him. Pharaoh's coming one way at him. The people are coming at him another way. And Pharaoh is uh, in a position where he can do what Kevin Wilson says, don't sweat the small stuff. It's easy to sing about that. It's easy to talk about it in the aftermath, but Moses found himself in a fix. And then God, he cried unto the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're in trouble, when you don't know what to do, when everything looks uh, disastrous, when it looks like it's going to be a, a real, real bottom out, call on the name of the Lord. The Bible says, blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Blessed is the woman who makes the Lord her trust. No matter what the situation looks like, no matter what the situation looks like, and David Carter in Dubai is a witness. He's joined us. We're going to hear from him later on. No matter what the situation looks like, you call upon the Lord, and the Lord will show up. Well, I called on him, Pastor. He hasn't shown up yet. Well, learn how to wait on him. God is not a man that he should lie. He said, call unto me, I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. Learn how to wait on the Lord. Don't, don't, don't measure God's movement by what people think. Don't look at the clock. Don't look at the calendar. You wait on the Lord. Look at the Bible. Look at God's word. Look what God promises. And so Moses is at the Red Sea with the people. Pharaoh's coming down on them to kill them. The people want to stone them, but there are no stones in the desert. 
and they, they're, they're sorry that they left Egypt. There are a lot of people who have given their lives to Christ, and then when the first trouble comes, they want to go back into sin. Some go back into drugs. Some go back into adult, adultery. Some go back into gambling. Some go back into drinking. Some go back into taking the opioids. Ladies and gentlemen, when you give your life to Jesus, don't go back. Don't go back. The Bible says any man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. There ain't nothing back there, ladies and gentlemen. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and respects not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Praise God. You're not the first person, Moses, to be in a situation like this. You're, and you won't be the last. Well, let's, let's look at what Moses did. Moses called on the Lord. And uh, verse 14, the Bible says, The Lord shall fight for you. And ye shall hold your peace. And then God told him, verse 15, Why are you crying unto me, Moses? I told you what I'm going to do. Lift up your rod. Lift up that rod in your hand. Stretch out your hand over the sea, verse 16, and divide the sea. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Trogler laid hands on his brother who had a stroke. The doctor said he would probably never walk again, never sit up, never feed himself. Well, this morning he's feeding himself. He's walking. He, he's, he's using a walker, but he will, he's walking. <clears throat> he's doing what the doctor said he would not do. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. God told Moses, stretch forth your rod. Take that staff you have in your hand. Stretch it out over towards the sea. And, and divide the waters. Command that those waters be divided. You, you mean to tell me, preacher, I can speak to of the Delaware River, I can speak to the Mississippi River, and I can say part, river, de uh, split, divide, so I can cross over into safety? Yes, all things are possible if you only believe. All things are possible if you only believe. Call on the name of the Lord. Your friends might think you're crazy. The neighbors might think you're crazy. But when God tells you to do something, do it. Moses stretched forth his rod towards the sea, and the sea divided, ladies and gentlemen. The sea divided. Before that, the angel of the Lord who, had, who, goes, who went before Israel, the angel of the Lord went to the rear of Israel to defend them against the oncoming Egyptians, and then that cloud of of uh, 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 that cloud by day uh, went to the rear of Israel to uh, prevent Egypt from getting to uh, the uh, Israelites. So you had the angel of the Lord, the pillar of fire by night, and the cloud by day standing between Egypt and Israel. Egypt, the charioteers could not penetrate the pillar of fire or the cloud, and the angel of the Lord withheld them as Moses stretched forth his hand. The Red Sea opened up, a pathway through the sea, wall, a wall of water on one side and a wall of water on the other side. And then in this miracle situation, God told Moses, command the people to walk through. And the people walked through, ladies and gentlemen. They walked through the Red Sea on dry land, and three million people walked through the Red Sea. Then when uh, Pharaoh's charioteers saw the people going through, they followed after them. And then God caused the wheels of the chariots to break down, and the charioteers were stuck in the middle of the Red Sea on dry land, and then God closed the waters. God told Moses, stretch your hand again. And the waters came back and swallowed up, drowned Pharaoh's army, his charioteers. And Israel saw a great, a great miracle. Ladies and gentlemen, a miracle like that ought to make people worship God forever and ever and ever and ever. And if you've seen something like that, why would you turn back? Well, as we continue going through the Bible, and I invite you to join me every Wednesday night as we go through this Bible, you, you'll see that these same people 
fell into unbelief and, and start doubting God and sinning against God. Ladies and gentlemen, just one miracle like that is enough. Hey, dude, did you feel that? Yeah, dude, I felt that. That's enough to make me want to praise the Lord all the days of my life. When God delivered me from so many things, it was sufficient to let me know that I can praise him and worship him all the days of my life without turning back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Moses was probably asking, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? And God showed him. The Red Sea was against his back and Pharaoh coming at him. Where do we go from here? God showed him the way. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, ladies and gentlemen, tells us there has no temptation, no problem, no challenge, no difficulty overtaken us but such as is common to man but God is faithful the Bible says he will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able to handle and the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 10 13 but God will always make the way of escape there is a way of escape and so many of you whether you're listening on live online live with me today or you're listening to the recording. Many of you have challenges. Challenges. You have issues. There are some of you, you've lost a loved one. Uh, 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 we just buried a friend of ours here in Georgia this past week. And I know his wife is saying, where do I go from here? I've been married to him for almost 30 years. Uh, where do I go from here? And then there are many others whom we know who've lost loved ones recently. Where do I go from here? If your life has been uh, dependent on another person, you've been in a relationship, and now one partner of that relationship is gone, where do I go from here? Well, the answer, ladies and gentlemen, is in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the life. There is life after loss of a loved one. Well, there's some of you, you've just got a bad report from the doctor. The doctor said you've got the big C, or you've suffered a stroke, or, or you've got high blood pressure, or you've got this disease, or you've got Ebola. But that's not the end, ladies and gentlemen. The doctors may say, well, there's no cure from it. It's incurable. But I know one, ladies and gentlemen, he has the cure for everything. There is no situation God cannot handle. There's no situation he cannot take care of. Call on him. Where do I go from here? I've got this bad medical report. Well, you turn to Jesus. Turn to him with all your heart. Don't turn to your relatives. Don't turn to your friends. Don't go back into things that uh, did you harm or mean you no good. Give your heart to Jesus and trust in him. Well, there are some of you, you may have gotten a report that you're lo you've lost your job. Your job's been terminated. Your company's packed up and moved like the company in West Virginia, that uh, coal manufacturer. He just packed up overnight and left uh, town with his administration, and the workers were there. They came to work the next day, and there was no job for them. Ladies and gentlemen, when you lose your job or when you lose your health, there are many of you, you, you have health issues. You, you, you have trouble walking. You have trouble seeing. Your balance is gone. Uh, you, you've got a cough or you've got cancer. You've got this and that. Ladies and gentlemen, don't give in. Don't cave in. Don't give up. God is a healer. He's a mighty healer. We just talked recently in Bible study this past Wednesday about how Abraham, God told him, you're going to be the father of a great nation. And, 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 and God, uh, Abraham talked to God, whoa, 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 back up, God, back up now. How am I going to be the father of a whole nation? <clears throat> I'm 76 years old. Ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing happening. And, and ain't nothing happening with Sarah. And, and you said, I'm going to be the father of a great nation. And then 25 years later, Abraham fathered a son, named him Isaac. And then later on, after Sarah died, Abraham got married again and had six more kids. It is no secret. God knows how to restore that which the enemy has stolen. Just trust in the Yes, he can work a miracle in your body. 
He can work a miracle in anybody. He's gone. Where do I go from here, preacher? Uh, I've lost my youth. I've lost my health. I, uh, I can barely make it. Uh, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. It is no secret what God can do. God knows how to restore. The Bible says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Well, you, you may say, but well, I'm losing my home. They're foreclosing on, on me. I can't keep up the payments. Trust in the Lord. God's got a plan. God's got a plan. Take it to the Lord. Then there are those of you, you're afraid of retiring. You, you, you're scared of retiring. And you don't, where do I go from here after retirement? Trust in the Lord. See, the Bible says, blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. And respect not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. I could go on and on and on with uh, problems people are having, but there's one solution, and the solution is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the door. Jesus said, I am the way. Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Not the church. Going to church won't do it. Uh, going to a meeting won't do it. You must be born again. And when you're born again, the Spirit of the Lord enters into you to live with you forever. God, he will guide you. Learn what he wants to do, you to do. Study the word of God. Get under the uh, anointing of a, a serious Bible teacher, preacher, or pastor. And study for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, Thou art inexcusable, O man. And you may say, well, pastor, you don't know my problems. No, I don't. But God knows them. God knows every problem. And there is no problem that he cannot solve. He's a wit I'm a witness. I'm a witness. And, and the Bible is loaded with witnesses. Moses is a witness. Joseph was a witness. Joseph found himself being sold by his brothers into slavery. And Joseph, once he got into Egypt, uh, he found himself being a uh, uh, seduced by his, his, his boss's wife. And Joseph ran from her. He did not give in, wound up in prison. He said, I don't deserve this prison imprisonment. Where do I go from here? But he waited on the Lord. Job, ladies and gentlemen, Job was afflicted with so many afflictions, lost his family, lost his children, lost everything he had. And his friend said, you must have sinned. You must have hidden sin in your life. His wife even said, curse God and die. But Job, Job said, I'm going to wait on the Lord. He said, though he slay me, still I will trust him. Though Even though God may slay me, I'm going to trust him. That's the kind of faith, ladies and gentlemen, that's the kind of faith that answers the question, where do I go from here? Ruth, Ruth, when she was with her mother-in-law, Naomi, her husband died, and she's in a strange land and, and doesn't know where to go. But she called on the Lord. And the Lord, the Lord comforted her. And Ruth said, I'm going to stay with you, Naomi. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. We've got witnesses, ladies and gentlemen. Ask Daniel. Daniel was thrown into a lion's den. He's in the middle of a lion's den. The lions had not eaten in several days. And they threw Daniel in the lion's den because Daniel refused refused to bow down before their idols and worship their king. And Daniel, I know, saying, where do I go from here? But he waited in the, on the Lord, and God locked the, locked the jaws of the lion and, and saved and spared Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ladies and gentlemen, thrown into a fiery furnace. They took that furnace and made it seven times hotter than hot. And threw those three Hebrews in because they refused to, to deny God. But God did not let them even burn, did not even let a hair on their head be singed, did not even let smoke 
the smell of smoke penetrate their clothes, but instead the fires burn up the ones who open the furnace doors to throw these three men in. Ladies and gentlemen, I could go on and on with witnesses who have been at the crossroads, who have asked this question, where do I go from here? Where do I go from here? And the answer in every situation, and the answer for you and for me is trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. Jesus is the answer, ladies and gentlemen, for the world today. Above him there is no other. Jesus is the way. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and respects not the, lie, the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. I don't know what you're going through today, ladies and gentlemen, but I want to offer to you Jesus. I give you Jesus. He's the peace that passes all understanding. He will heal your body. He will save your soul. And yes, backslider, he will receive you back into his presence. He will deliver you from backsliding. Turn, sinner, turn while you can. The Bible says, this day if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Return to the Lord and see what he will do. God has never, never, never lost anyone. He's never forsaken any who have called upon his name. Let me pray for you right now. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give thanksgiving and praise and glory and honor to you. And we worship you, Lord. We worship you. Oh, God, forgive us of all of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity. Lord, I lift up everyone under the sound of my voice, whether they're listening live or whether they're coming on um, by way of their recording. I, I submit every situation to you. There is nothing you cannot handle. So I commit the people to you. I commit every situation to you and ask that you guide us and keep us. For those who need salvation, save them, Lord, I pray. For those who need deliverance, deliver them, Lord. For those who need healing, I ask that you heal them, Lord, Father God. For those who need uh, financial blessings, bless them, Lord. Meet every need, Lord God. We commit everything to you. And we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died on the cross for every one of us. And we praise you. You are our Savior, our Lord, our God, and our King. And we bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise God. Bless God. Bless God. I pray that this message has touched, has touched you today. And if you want to be saved, you ask the Lord right now to save you. Confess your sins. Tell him you're guilty of sin and you're sorry for sin. And ask him to forgive you. And he will forgive you. He will forgive you. We want you to stay on uh, line right now. We're going to play one more song by... Uh, Kevin Wilson, and that's called A Place for Forgiveness, and then we'll have a little chat and chew. Stay online, listen to Kevin Wilson. Good. 
Praise God. Thank you, Kevin Wilson. Thank you for sharing that song with us. Praise God. And um, we just praise God for this mighty ministry, this powerful ministry, how God is changing lives. And um, we want to uh, just, uh, we're going to close out the um, recording section now, but we want to chat and chew a little bit. We're going to bring Ask David Carter uh, to come on from Dubai, and we always we're glad, always glad to hear from David in Dubai. 